I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you.
to redistribute, to reallocate amongst the departments. And uh, we proposed most of that, about three quarters of that, be added to what we were recommending for the school department and the balance be allocated to town departments. And we met with the town departments today and the school department today. And we distributed what is now our recommended budget. And we really don't have any um, more unanswered questions. So we're pretty, at least on the revenue structure, we're pretty uh, confident in our forecasts. And we met with the departments today. We received a lot of feedback. It's good to our meeting, a lot of back and forth. And so the next two Monday nights, you're going to be hearing from uh, about five departments. They are going to make uh, presentations to the board, and uh, that would might necessitate um, additional revenues over and beyond what uh, Mike and I have uh, prepared for you folks, uh, which we call the, the balance budget. Um, so I believe next Monday night, uh, fire and police will be there, and the following Monday, DPW, Library, and Accounts on Aging, um, we believe we'll make presentations to the board, and then the board will make uh, um, uh, an informed decision as to how to go forward from there. So last, last, last time we met with you, we talked about the concept of the budget right now is balanced financial. In other words, the revenues and the expenditures are equal. Um, Many of the department heads at the meeting today expressed concern that they, with the budget that's balanced financially with available revenues, they will not be able to deliver an adequate level of services or the same level of services that they need to do now. Now I see you to come in front of you to talk to you about the ramifications of that. Yeah, I have a question. I'd like to uh, get to the school budget. Mm -hmm. I see in your report here that uh, we have added to the school budget uh, from the uh, dollar amount that was discussed last Monday evening. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was due to the fact, as you have said, that the governor has now released his numbers. And uh, so my question is, um, when are we going to hear from the schools on is this money that is $790,682 from the town side added to their Chapter 70 money? Um, is that going to be acceptable to them? I can't speak for them. The superintendent was there, the assistant superintendent was there. Um, what they express to us is that they will not be able to deliver the same level of service that they do this year um, with an increase in, of that amount. They have some extenuating circumstances that are really out of their control due to out-of-district placements. But uh, we did hear, um, <coughs> we did hear feedback from them that, that um, this is not sufficient to meet their needs. But there is, um, between the departments, there's a philosophical divide on whether um, the override or in override should be put forward this year or next year, and uh, that's a debate that's going to end up in front of you in the next couple of weeks. But I don't want to speak on that. So right now, uh, the information that we have currently tonight mm -hmm. is that they're not looking for any more, but they're not done yet with their budget? Is that it? They are not done. They'll be done early March, I think. Right. And I, and I think they'll be making an appearance before the board, you know, hopefully sooner than later. Okay. I had a question. Yep. <clears throat> so, uh, as you folks know, we have a capital funding study committee right now and that committee has already voted to uh, petition the selectmen to put on a town meeting an annual town meeting article to establish a capital fund and also establish a capital fund committee to oversee that uh, to, to act uh, much like CPC community preservation where there's a fund established and there's a committee that 
um, reviews the projects and um, prioritizes them. If that passes at this town meeting, how does that affect uh, the budget? Because I'm sure it's some of the budget items for each department are capital items. Maybe not huge ticket items, uh, but the budget uh, has capital line items, I'm sure. So those would get pulled out. Uh, there'd be a mechanism uh, to work on that that you as, an, as the town accountant will be uh, important to have a look at. Uh, what can you say of that just um, uh, to give the guy, that committee some guidance on going forward? What are your initial thoughts on it? Um, it's a great idea. We need it. It's long overdue. What's happened under 30 plus years of two and a half is capital is one of the things to get to squeeze out uh, the operating budgets because we're more concerned about keeping the lights on and people um, keeping people ready to answer the telephone. Um, so it's it's long overdue. We need it badly. Um, practically speaking, I don't think that could really. It would be difficult to have that lay it into the fiscal 19 budget. So I would think, practically speaking, it's a great idea. We need to do it, but to do it right, we might have to wait till 2020 for an actual leap date. So that's just my initial thought. But like anything else, it's in the details to where the money's going to come from and that kind of thing. Sure. Anybody else? Uh, well, I, think I did have a further question. <clears throat> the, so each department uh, will come before the Board of Selectmen and uh, speak to us and, and the public in general about their individual case. Uh, you folks had a, a department head meeting today. Uh, do we need or will should we expect a joint meeting between department heads, Board of Selectmen, uh, advisory committee, uh, as we've done in the past? or? Has that become uh, uh, unnecessary at this stage? Uh, I would think at some point it will be necessary. I think what we should do next is um, some departments are fine. Animal control is fine, for instance, um, moving forward. Some departments, they have serious issues that need to be in front of the public and in front of the board. and. Um, we need to hear that out. That process will take two or three weeks, and then we'll decide. Um, it's really going to end up with the board, though. The board will decide what to do. But that will have to happen at some point between now and now. The idea of everybody getting this. Right. It's important and it's helpful. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I have a clarification issue on what Dan brought up about a capital fund mm -hmm. and um, is there some issue with that idea that we may not be able to start that immediately should it get approved in May um, if we're going to hear from other departments mm -hmm. about needs that they have that are not covered in this level funded budget balanced budget mm -hmm. um, they would be looking for additional funds for certain reasons mm -hmm. what why why is that different than establishing a capital fund only because I don't know the details of the fund and I don't know where the money's going to come from once those details are put together and brought forward then I can tell you then we should take this route we should take that route but right now, the only way um, I see money becoming available is either we wait for free cash in the fall, or we take it from another a proposal for another department. Okay, now I, I get it. We we right. may be, uh, have money in the free cash in the fall. Sure, that's how we've historically done it. Okay, um, that's really band-aid every year. It's not really, okay um, making any forward progress. All right, got it. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Questions from the audience? Yeah. Um, do we do any short-term borrowing still? We, um, the question was, <laughs> do we do any short-term borrowing? 
We have not done short-term borrowing for cash flow needs for about 15 years since we went to quarterly cash flow. We have issued short-term notes to pay for things we haven't permanently financed yet. Um, hard mark sidewalk comes to mind. So we have some short-term debt out there. So any potential rate increases won't hurt us then? Um, it's no, it's not insignificant. Any, um, it, it's a balancing act. Do you borrow now and you incur the cost of issuance? It's like <coughs> like mortgage. You incur the closing costs um, for every single issue that comes up, or do you wait and pull them together so you can save on closing costs further down the road? Um, what we have in stabilization now? One point a little north of one point three million. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, the revenues on the town side, you feel pretty comfortable with those numbers. Obviously, you know what the two and a half increase is. Are you looking at the additional excise tax? Is that projected in? Yeah, we just actually had the conversation with the advisory committee. Um, I feel comfortable. I don't, with the numbers we're putting on the table for 19, um, some on advisory are a little bit uncomfortable. But uh, given the situation and given the needs we have, um, I feel comfortable working for the So, uh, I know when you put years ago put together a budget, sometimes you say, well, we're going to maybe anticipate a little more and, and hope we hit that number or we feel very comfortable and we'll pull back a little for more free cash. Are we kind of cutting back a potential flow of free cash by putting this budget together now in certain numbers? Yes, we did the same thing last year, right? Um, I guess the question, town minister, is on. You know, I know there's some talks about override. Um, what can you say to the public about the cuts that have been made? Have there been any cuts or any anticipated cuts, or just basically the level of funding at the what, What's happened? The school department's made a lot of cuts. Um, what's happening on the town side is we're operating, and anybody can feel free to jump in. We're really operating at staffing levels, particularly for police and fire. Um, excluding minor adjustments, one or two people here or there. Um, same staffing levels as we did 20, 25 years ago. And the number of incidents, incidences that we're responding to, um, the, to the time it takes to respond to those incidents, and the type of incidents are completely different than they were 25, 30, 40 years ago when we had this level of staffing. It's a different world and it um, takes a lot more effort um, to properly respond and deliver the service, particularly in public safety, that that requires. And the reporting afterwards and the paperwork and so on. Yeah, and then it's, a, it's, a, it's just a different world. I don't live it, so I can't really speak to it, but it's a lot different. Um, the kind of calls we're responding to. And my, my last question, as you look at Chief Crystal Ball in 2020, mm -hmm. it's a scary number. You have a similar pro problems? Do you feel that you're going to be in better shape, or it's tough to look that far? Um, I really am not an economist. I don't know. Um, I know the state, the federal government, we all know, all know what's happening there. I'm saying projected numbers for pay raises, uh, heat health insurance, if you look a year down the road, are we going to have the same problem, or do you think? Uh, well, we don't have a rich uncle that's going to help us. It's it's, it's up to the people who, who live in Pembroke and pay taxes to decide what they want. Um, under the structure, under the two and a half, which you've lived with since 1981, there's a an, there's an somewhat arbitrary limit of two and a half percent to the tax levy increase that's added by new growth. Um, and that was not designed to be two and a half forever. That's why the override thing was in there. Um, if we have an override for the, um, any town department this year, I can tell you that next year we won't need an override for the same department. I can tell you that. I can tell you that um, Mayflower has done a good job of getting that house in order, and um, I don't foresee any drastic swings in the health insurance. Um, but I honestly can't tell you for certainty that I know. I'll just tell you what I think. Thank you. For the members of the board, and while we're talking about uh, looking ahead in the future, the uh, um, uh, committee on uh, 
uh, capital funding. We'll be hosting uh, representatives from UMass Boston Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. We will be presenting the uh, long range forecasting model that the town had received a grant from the community compact program. And uh, the board obviously is invited to that, uh, as well as advisory and, and uh, dance committee. And they'll be presenting um, how they plan on uh, putting that model together. Uh, the plan is to have them present it for uh, the Maytown meeting. And uh, I'll be signing a contract with UMass Boston tomorrow. That's been approved by town council. Uh, Mike and the staff that will be dealing with UMass Boston have a meeting with them tomorrow at 1130 uh, to go over the details about the information that they're going to want. So uh, hopefully uh, this project will, uh, you know, will at least uh, show uh, advisory to select and interested people, department heads, <clears throat> you know, where the town might be in, uh, in uh, four or five years from now. Would hopefully shed some light on your question. <clears throat> Mike, could you could you give us uh, the board of selectmen when you have a chance a quick graph of, <clears throat> of the town and school side costs and the revenues because uh, the, the reason we're so lean right now <clears throat> is they've been really close together mm -hmm. and now uh, coming up this year from the from this, just this conversation we're ready. Uh, the, the costs are going greater than the revenues. If, if you could just give the, from, it doesn't have to be 1980, but mm -hmm. go back as, as, as far as you're comfortable, at least 10 years. Sure. Um, it's it's a, a graphic is a good picture for people to quickly see um, costs going up, revenues, at one point there's an apex mm -hmm. where, they, where they cross, and I think it's this year that that's happening. Right. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Okay. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Anybody else? Any other questions? Yeah, I'd just like to add another thing that uh, since I've been on this board for nine years, I can testify to the fact that this board has always been very mindful about what it costs to run this town, how much taxes we're asking people to pay, and what kind of services we're giving them, and what services are being requested and what are required and it's like every year having a balanced budget but trying to make do with what we've got we've never asked for an override and when you're looking at health insurance costs that are going from anywhere from three percent to five percent and then all of a sudden they go the 12 percent, the 15 percent, it, it takes a big bite out of our budget. And every year it's always a balanced budget, that's for sure. But it's a level funded budget all the time, which means you've got the same number of people trying to give the same services you always gave, but really tight. And those services may not really be what are required. And I think, uh, like Dan has alluded to here, that I think we've got to the point now where we, we have to have an open mind on sticking with a balanced budget with no additional services, no additional people to provide those services again. And I'm not sure whether that's the best answer for Pembroke. So that's what we will be looking at and working with you and Ed on and the advisory board and the school department and trying to come up with what is really in the best interests of Pembroke. And we have to present that to the townspeople. They're the ones that will make the final decision. So that's where I think we're going. And we've got a lot of good information and we've scheduled additional meetings and uh, so I'm looking forward to a really fruitful discussion on, on these matters and presenting to the public what we think as a board is the best answer for the town. We will be doing that. Thank you. And, and I just 
video is the same thing there, that you can't go year after year after year with the same level budget and the same services and all that year after year after year. It's, it's something has to happen, so no doubt about that because, like I said uh, last week, I think you guys have done a really good job about coming up with a level funded budget and so on all the department heads about cutting and trying to give the same services. Something has to give somewhere, so. Yeah, well, we've got the um, police chief here. It might not be a bad opportunity to discuss where we are with uh, manpower in his department in particular. Well, that's he's scheduled for next Monday night. Well, awesome. I don't see any harm in, you know, him addressing us tonight, but um, we can wait a week if that's what's plan, but um, I think, you know, we're asking our public safety people to do more with less, and, um, you know, it, it's going to get to the point where it's going to be dangerous to, to be in the job, and um, I think we've got to look at, um, you know, not only public safety, but departmental safety. Um, you know, we're, we're at staffing levels that are 20 years older or better. Better. <laughs> yeah. Now we'll have the information in advance. Yeah, yeah both chiefs are going to present as well as the following Monday. So. Yeah. Yeah, we have the game plan mapped out for you folks. That's good. Okay. Thank you very Thanks, much. Mike. Thank you. Uh, do we have anything for us, Selectman? I do, Mr. Chairman. I have received a lot of uh, questions from people about uh, Solar Farm. And as you probably know, it is up and running. And But there are many other questions that I've been asked about uh, that project that we have put in place. And so I uh, spoke to Ed about it today. And uh, I asked him if he would put some numbers together that we can report to the public uh, about what kind of revenue we expect to get out of the solar farm and how is it going to be used. So, Ed? Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the board, um, there are three sources of revenue or savings that the town is to, uh, uh, to enjoy from the, uh, the landfill project. Uh, the first one is a land lease of uh, 76500 uh, That uh, The first payment was received a year ago, and the uh, second one was received about uh, three or four weeks ago. Uh, we received it on a yearly basis, one time a year. Um, that land lease is already included in the town's general fund budget under local receipts, so that's already accounted for. Uh, the second source of revenue is a payment in lieu of taxes which um, for years one through 10 will be $105,000 a year that will be paid. Um, and that already has been included in the town's tax levy as required by the Department of Revenue. And the third source of uh, income or savings would be the yearly uh, uh, utility savings in all of the electric bills in town. Now, basically, all town buildings, including the schools, um, you know, cost about 5.2 million kilowatt hours a year. Uh, the uh, facility at Havamak is projected to produce about 4.3 million. So about 80% of what the town uses will be generated by the solar facility. So the, uh, the actual net savings uh, on a yearly basis, uh, we'll start at uh, 274,000 year one, and by year 20, increase to 460,000. Now, of that kilowatt usage, the school department uses 66% of all the electricity used by all town facilities. Uh, for instance, um, the high school alone you know, uses a million kilowatt hours a year, you know, which is almost 
twenty percent of the total town. So, like I said, sixty percent, seventeen point six percent of the kilowatt <coughs> usage is used by town-owned buildings, town hall, the police department, the fire department, etc. The water department uses sixteen point four percent of all the energy that is used, and that is all the uh, the uh, the wells that we have in town that caught, that use a lot of electricity to pump water to the residents of the town. So if you take that, those percentages and you use year one of the net benefit of the power purchase agreement, that means in the first year the school department <coughs> will save $180,000 in electric costs, town government 48000 and the water department 44. And over a 20 year, the average would be the school department will average around 240,000 in savings, town building 64,000, and the water department 60,000. So that's basically the savings that will be generated. Now we haven't seen any of them yet on any of our electric bills, but as we do, you know, we'll be monitoring that situation. So we're using these numbers as of July 1 of 2018 for FY19. So um, basically th that's the savings that we will uh, we'll see yet at the, the solar facility at, uh, on Habermack Street. Uh, may I just ask a question? We will be getting uh, documentation as far as what the solar farm generates in kilowatt from National Grid that's correct. And, then, and from Onyx as and well. And then we will get an actual usage like we always do. And then we can check on what kind of credits we can expect to get and how we're doing with that solar farm. Right. I mean, as I just mentioned to you, we kind of simplified the matters. I mean, it, took, it was a pretty exhaustive process. There were like 55 different electrical counts that we have in town. And we narrowed it down to those... Um, to three departments, obviously. Um, the schools obviously have five buildings, and the rest were scattered among uh, town owned buildings. I mean, we're talking about the electric bill for town landing, which is like $100 for the year. You know, things like that. I mean, that's how low we got with this thing. And up to town hall probably uses more electricity than any town building um, that we have, um, you know, with the police and fire you know, coming in second and third in the library as well. So, uh, but, you know, we worked with National Grid and with uh, Onyx to put together this plan, and uh, basically this is what we've come up with, um, and uh, that's what it is. So that's what the net savings is going to be in the first year and uh, what the average is going to be over the next 20 years. That's good. Is that, was that in our packet last week, what you just spoke of? Yeah. <clears throat> So we're already collecting a leasing fee, seventy-six thousand five hundred dollars annually, and payment in lieu of taxes is one hundred and five thousand. Correct. That's another annual. That's correct. So we can count on that annually. The rest is dependent upon kilowatt hours generated from the farm, and kilowatt hour usage from all of our buildings. Right. Thank you. That's good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You see that that extra money is there, so it's almost 200000 extra a year. Well, it's extra, but it's already accounted for. Yeah. And I mean, that, that's part that of the exercise that Mr. Buckley and I go through. Yeah. You know, I mean, you talk about, you know, squeezing every source of revenue. Mm -hmm. That's it right there. Would it be great if that was just excess revenue that we could throw into a capital fund? That'd be great, and maybe that might happen. Yeah. But right now, you know, based on the cost of doing business in for the town of Pembroke, mm -hmm. I think that's a very good example of how tight things have been here in the town between revenue that's generated versus expenses that are required to run the town. We we've even figured in those dollars that were just stated by Ed, generated by the deal we have for the solar farm. So as Ed just said, that is an extra money 
That money is already in the level funded budget, which is giving nobody anything extra than what they had to deal with for this year. Thank you. All righty. Um, do you have anything on the new business? No, sir. I, I just, on, while we're, um, if anybody still were required uh, information that, that might have been in last week's, that was in last week's packet and, and you're missing it, just feel free to let me know and I'll send you a new copy of it. If you could email that to us, that'd sure. be great. Mm -hmm. That's, um, I'd like to share it with some of my committees. Sure. Well done. Uh, yeah, if, if you have a have an, an online rather than scan it, because the resolution is pretty sure. pretty rotten. This is a mine that work. I got just, it. He had to listen. Okay, uh, we have upcoming issues. Um, on January 31st at 6 o'clock, UMass Boston Collins Center presentation, best practices for long range planning, forecasting model, uh, and that's going to be held at the Veterans Hall. That should be right here. Isn't Wednesday, January 31st? That's what I said. It is. Yes. January yeah, 31st. Yeah. I, I have the right because I marked it okay. online, so that's all right. <laughs> I went around before the meeting. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. I'm going to be there Wednesday. That's, I just yeah. want that person to be there, too. They are. Um, <laughs> February 1st, 10.30 a.m., Lieutenant Governor um, Polito will be here, and she's going to sign a community compact with uh, Ed for the town. And that's going to be for that grant for uh, IT. Is, is that the IT? That and, uh, the, and uh, the two past practices that we submitted <laughs> our application for was um, the one that we've already been awarded for the long-range forecasting model, and also uh, an ADA transition plan to make the town eligible for handicap accessible projects mm -hmm. going forward from uh, the Mass Commission on Disabilities. Awesome. That's good. Um, February 5th, we have uh, an open special within the uh, annual town meeting warrant. Um, February 9th, all the warrants are going to close. April 23rd, we're going to be signing the town meeting warrants. May 8th is the annual town meeting. And May 12th is the annual town election. And is there any other business before the town? Oh, sir. Okay, the only thing I want to say is that uh, I've been watching television quite a bit this last week. And I know usually once a week in the winter time, I usually say something about the ice on the ponds. Um, because it is very hazardous and you can see a lot of the police and fire are training throughout the Commonwealth about uh, rescuing people. Um, so far everything has been pretty good that I've seen that they have made rescues and they have got the people out of the water. Um, unfortunately that's not true all the time. Uh, over the years I've seen kids go through the ice um, and not be able to get back up or not be able to get out of the ice if somebody doesn't recognize them soon enough or it's at night time and nobody can see them. So just be uh, cognizant of parents that are out there with their kids and some of the parents at night operating uh, these snow machines and things like that on the ponds, they go through the ice too. Um, I live on Furnace Pond and I've seen them over the years go through the ponds and we've been very lucky that the people have get out of that so um, just be careful and cognizant that the ice is weak in a lot of places and uh, keep your eye on it so motion to adjourn second all those in favor aye, aye. anybody opposed all right so that'll conclude uh, tonight's um, business of january 29th 2018, the Pembroke Board of Selectmen. Uh, uh, I'm glad that you tuned in to uh, watch the program. If you have any questions or comments, please don't uh, hesitate to call at any time. So, uh, and again, we'll see you next week, and have a good week. Thank you.